Welcome back. Live from St. Paul, Representative Paul Marquardt out of Minnesota. We're going to talk about the governor's recent budget proposal. Paul, thanks for joining me tonight from St. Paul. Well, thank you. Good evening. Hey, I want to start here. Obviously, you've seen this proposal. One of the pieces that we've been talking about, Governor Dayton says, hey, one of the strategies to start to close this $1.1 billion budget deficit is to go out there and tax the more wealthy Minnesotans. Do you agree that that's an effective strategy and the right thing for Minnesota? You know, I've been listening to the show and I haven't talked to Tiger Woods, but I have talked to thousands of residents back in my district over the last half year. And what they told me is that they want good funding for schools to make sure that their students and their sons and daughters have the best education possible. And they said, please lower my property taxes. And that's exactly what the governor's budget does. And, you know, before I talk about the revenues, this budget that the governor put out, Governor Dayton, was the most honest and forward-thinking budget I've seen in a decade. Because what he does is he solves the budget deficit, which has not been done in the past, with no gimmicks, no shifts, no one-time funding, so that the budget will be balanced not only this year, but every year into the future, and then invest in the education property tax relief. So on balance, uh, you know, it's a good plan. And, you know, as far as the total tax bill, uh, there's about $1.5 billion in property tax relief. On an average rural Minnesota home, that would be a 33% cut. So, Paul, let me ask you this one more time. Do you think that taxing the wealthy Minnesotans is an effective and the right strategy for Minnesota to solve this budget deficit? It's You have to look at everything total. So we're saying if we're going to look at revenue, and here's what it is. You can't just take one piece of it, and there is a piece that raises taxes 2% on any income over $250,000. That's about 2% of the population. But as I mentioned, there's a 33% property tax cut for every single homeowner uh, in rural Minnesota. There's a 14% cut on corporate income tax. There's huge cuts on business property taxes. So I think when you look at the, the program overall, you say, what are you getting for this tax reform? And what you're getting is about $600 million of new investment in education, not only in high school and elementary and early childhood, but also in higher education. So. You've got to look at the package overall. And, you know, I was listening early, talking about people leaving the state. I think when they look at the package overall, it's a very fair package that actually positions Minnesota for good future economic growth. So I want to share something with you, Paul. Maryland has tried this in the past. I don't know if you can see this graphic via Skype or not, but if we can bring up this graphic and I'll go through it just so you can hear what I want to share with you. Maryland did a millionaire's tax. This is a study that was done that essentially chased out the rich. It was from 2007 to 2010. When they look back on their tax revenues, they actually lost $1.7 billion in tax revenues due to the wealthy people moving out of their state. My question for you is, if you raise the taxes on the wealthy, some of them move. We both know Minnesota winners aren't that fun to be a part of. And then you're saying we're going to lower property taxes. Where's the money going to come from? You know, I've looked a lot at those migration studies as you're talking about. And in fact, I think the one in Maryland, much of the deficit was because we hit a recession. Remember, you said between 2007 and 2010. That's when the huge recession hit. And in fact, there were just less millionaires because people were making less money off of capital gains and other things. The evidence is, and I've looked at several studies, Maryland and many other ones, it's very inconclusive. Minnesota has always been a high tax, high spending state. We know that. We're cold weather. You know, people don't come here for the weather. But there is a reason why we rank number one in the nation in Fortune 500 companies per capita. And it's because in what we invest in, and it, we invest in infrastructure and education, which produces an excellent workforce that when businesses come in is very attractive. And so you can't just look at the tax ledger and say whether or not businesses or people will come and go. Minnesota actually, with our tax structure in the past, has actually attracted more people and more businesses than the other way around. You know, Paul, you got to give you kudos on that one. One of the things that fascinates me, North Dakota has zero Fortune 500 companies. I don't know how that makes any sense. And I do give Governor Dayton credit. He is going to lower the corporate tax. One other thing I do have for you, the Viking Stadium. The pull tabs are not pulling in the revenue that they anticipated. Who is this lap? Basically, where is the money going to come from? Whose lap does it fall on now? The early projections, just as you mentioned, Chris, are below what we want to see. 
Uh, the folks who are in the gaming industry say give it some time. There are some fallbacks. There are some taxes on the stadium if the taxes on the pull tabs don't come in. I'm still confident they will, but it is something we certainly have to keep an eye on. And also what Governor Dayton mentioned about this budget, he said it's the first word, not the final word. So I think it's good debate that we're going to have, and there's certainly pros and cons, but I think if you look at the package overall, and there's going to be a lot of debate and probably lots of changes, I, I think it does move more, or moves uh, Minnesota forward. Well, I definitely appreciate you having the debate, Paul. I know the people obviously in your district and here in western Minnesota do as well. Stay with us, Paul, because when we come back, we've got some great questions from our audience. We posed the question earlier on Facebook, and even right now, if you've got some questions for comments for Representative Mark Hort, please go to our website, 630pov.com. You see the phone number here at the bottom. Just simply text that phone number. We will get that right away, and be sure and get your questions asked for Representative Mark Hort. Stay close. Much more coming up. Welcome back. Live from St. Paul with us tonight, Representative Paul Marquardt out of Minnesota talking about Governor Dayton's budget proposal. Paul, thanks for staying with us. We've had a you couple bet. of great texts and questions for you, and I want to get right to you to those. This is from our Facebook page. It says, if I heard right, is there going to be a tax on Internet sales? I already charge Minnesota residents Minnesota sales tax. If we have to charge a sales tax to Internet customers in other states and Canada and... Show more, if I heard right, is there going to be a tax on Internet sales? I already charge Minnesota residents this sales tax. Your comments on that, Paul? Right now, we can't charge a sales tax on Internet sales. It's a federal type of thing. But uh, right now, what we do, what we're trying to tax are, for example, right now, businesses on Main Street that have brick and mortar, they pay property taxes and they you know, pay income taxes and everything else, they might have a product, but they're competing with someone who's selling over the internet and not paying any of those taxes. So what we're trying to do is capture some taxes from some of those out of state uh, companies and level the playing field with our main street businesses downtown who are paying property taxes and all those other taxes also. Paul, I'm very curious to get your answer on this one. This is the text that came in during our interview. Why does the media and our politicians believe a government surplus is good and yet a business profit is bad? Your thoughts on that? Well, I think a business profit is great because when we have that, that means our economy is moving forward. We're hiring more people and, you know, our economy is better overall. So I, uh, you know, I, I like the fact and I'm hoping always that business can do well. And I do think, and that's why education is so very important and that our streets and roads are in good shape. That all helps our economy and helps businesses reach a profit. So again, then why do you think it's a good thing to go out there and raise taxes on the wealthier Minnesotans if you think, hey, profits are good, it gives us a chance to go out there and hire more people? It's part of Governor Dayton's plan. And if that was the only part of the tax portion, uh, I would not support that. Great but you point. have to take it overall. I mean, there's significant property tax relief. There's also cuts in corporate income tax and also business property tax. So you have to take it overall. And then the governor invests, as I mentioned, education, higher education, and those things that really help the economy here in Minnesota. Paul, we really appreciate you taking the time on an evening down there in St. Paul. Look forward to having you back in the near future. We will talk to you soon and keep up the great work, okay? Thanks so much. Great to be with you. Thanks so much. Stay close. When we come back, we're going to get some more of your feedback. And one question we're going to check out, how do you feel about Beyonce lip syncing the national anthem? Join our conversation. Go to our website, 630pov.com. Email, Twitter, call us, text us. Whatever's easiest for you.